Welcome everybody to tonight's um, live session. This is the first of our live sessions that are going to run for 10 weeks every Thursday night between 7 and 7.30. My name is Fiona Kelly. I'm LYIT's Marketing Manager and tonight we're going to be joined by a few people. We're going to be joined by Dr. Kim McFadden who is the Head of Life and Physical Sciences Department at LYIT. We're going to be joined by lecturer Kathy Hannigan, lecturer in Food Science and Nutrition and we're going to be joined by graduate Tony Kelly um, and who's going to talk about her time studying food science and nutrition at LYIT. So let's get straight into tonight because we have a lot of ground to cover um, and let's welcome Dr. Kim McFadden, the Head of Department of Life and Physical Sciences. So you're welcome, Kim. Hello, Fiona. Lovely to speak to you. Lovely to speak to you and great to have you back on again. You're back for more. I haven't done this yes. before. You're pro yes. now at the stage. <laughs> I don't know about that nice year, but I'll give it a go. Give it a go. <laughs> yeah. So you're on campus today and you're going to be talking to me about your 12 CAO program. So we're covering a lot of ground today. We're going to talk about the common entry in science. We're going to talk about the agriculture program. We're going to speak about bioscience, food science and nutrition, which Kathy and Tony are going to cover. We're talking about farm pharmaceutical medicinal science, veterinary nursing, moving and then to pharmacy technician and then going into our three health science programs. So a lot of CAO programs to cover. So let's yes. get into it. Yes. Okay, yes. so we'll start from the top. We'll talk about the common entry in science. It's a four year level eight honours degree program. It allows yes. you to branch off into specialisms in the second year. So can you tell me a little bit about the course and what makes it special? Well, the common entry course is designed for those um, students that maybe have taken um, one of the, the science subjects at Leaving Cert. So a lot of people come into us say with have Leaving Cert Biology with no other um, mod, uh, subject or they might come in with chemistry or physics. Um, and they like science, but they don't know what they want to do. And they, um, so what we do in first year is we gather them all together in no one big lecture hall and we teach all the common entry students alongside those students that have already chosen um, their degree uh, program. So those students that chose either pharmaceutical medicinal science, the bioscience or the food science um, and nutrition program. So we get them all in together, um, them with the common entry students, and we teach them all a common first year. So in first year, we teach them chemistry, physics, biology, maths, transferable skills, computers, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then at the end of first year, they get to pick. So the students that, uh, that um, pick to the common entry in their CAO get a full year. And then at the end of that full academic year, they get to pick then what they want to do. So during that first year also, we also give them a flavor of, you know, what's to be, uh, what's coming up down the line uh, for pharmaceutical and medicinal science. Um, give them a wee taste too for food science and nutrition and also another taste for the bioscience. So they get a good uh, grip of, you know, what is it um, each involves. And then they sort of, they always tend to gear towards one or the other. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, they get a good grounding in each of them. And then at the yeah. end of the year one, then they get to choose which one they want to go on to. No, and then they branch off into the specialisms yeah. then. So specialisms are pharmaceutical and medicinal science, food science and nutrition, and then that bioanalytical science or yes. bioscience. So yes. in terms of the first year then, so the first year is almost like a taster. Um, it's a taster it level is. eight first year and it gives is. them that kind of grounding to make the decision to progress on in yeah. terms of then their specialism. Yeah. And another thing to point out, Fiona, and I, I, I know this person because I teach the first year chemistry groups. Um, if if you're coming in and say you only have leaving cert biology and, you, you know, the students are panicking, oh, I don't have leaving cert chemistry, I don't have leaving cert physics. Well, don't be worrying about that. OK, what we do is we take everybody in and we start from scratch. As, as, yeah. as if you would never, you know, opened a biology book before in your life or a chemistry book. We start from the bottom and bring you up. So everybody at the end of year one will be at the same level. Yeah, so well, just having one, one or even none, no science module or subject at Leaving Cert will not be a disadvantage to you at all. Yeah, well, that's good to know. So that would be the level eight choice. But then you mentioned as you were chatting there, there is the option then to do these as level sevens as well. So you might know that it's food science and nutrition that you like, or you might know that it's pharmaceutical and medicinal science or, or it's um, bioscience, for instance. So yes. for somebody who maybe was thinking about the level sevens in these areas, let's let's start with bioscience. 
what is bioscience? Bioscience would be our biology based um, program. So a lot of the students that come into that program have the leaving cert biology. Now, again, as I said previously, it's not mandatory, you know, um, but it would be, uh, you know, beneficial. So um, after first year, first year, as I said already, you, you do the biology, chemistry, physics, math, and so on and so forth. And then from second year onwards, then you specialize. So the level seven is the three year. So you do year one and then year two and three, that's where you specialize. Then you can go on and do the fourth year. OK, and a lot of people don't realize that. So it's like an add on degree. So you can do the yeah. fourth year then in that uh, in that program. So from as I said, from year two onwards, you're specializing in that area. So we do a lot of microbiology. We do cell culture. We do genetics. We do DNA. There's also then the other side of the coin as well. We do um, environmental science. Mm -hmm. ecosystems and things like that. And one of the modules is very topical at the minute is apply, applied immunology. Uh, which I'm sure a lot of people know and know that what that word means now, but that's a module in itself, a 10 credit module in itself and, and third year. Um, so a lot of people would be able to, you know, lend their minds to what does that mean now? You know, it's not just a big yeah. long word. Yeah, um, it so actually means the, something. Yeah. 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 So yeah, um, I'm very applicable in, in today's world. In so that's the bioscience, bioscience yeah. course. So and just the, on the bioscience course, Kim, is that that course recognized by the teaching council it is fiona which is great and it yeah. leaves the options open for the student also so a lot of yeah. uh, whilst, you know a lot of our students go off into industry a lot mm -hmm. of our graduates also go off and to yeah because we recently we recently as part of some work we're doing um for the website at lyit we interviewed actually one of the teachers um i think evan um maybe evan, evan. Evan. Yeah, uh, who was one of indeed. the bioscience mm -hmm. students, yeah, indeed, and is a biology teacher and went on. So that's that's a really unique aspect. So say mm -hmm. if parents or anybody watching today is thinking, well, what other opportunities to have that teaching council recognition is a big deal when it comes that's to huge, the program yeah. as well. We're yes. not going to focus on food science and nutrition with you because we're going to reach out to Kathy and Tony um, at the end of this, but uh, my talk with you. But we're going to talk now about pharmaceutical and medicinal science. So it too has a level seven, three year bachelor with the plus one option and terms of the top up top up so what's pharmaceutical and medicinal science so pharmaceutical and medicinal science that's more or less um that'd be more of our chemistry based degree mm -hmm. okay so the bioscience is a biology based and the pharmaceutical and medicinal science that'd be uh, it's quite heavy in chemistry to uh which we're actually looking at um making that um approved for teaching council as well wow um so hopefully that's coming down the line too it's not here just yet but hopefully now it's coming down the line so Definitely. in our pharmaceutical and medicinal science program what we're doing again is common first year with everybody else and after second year you specialize and what we do is we take the student through the drug development process so essentially we're making drugs <laughs> i always <laughs> laugh we're making drugs but as pharmaceuticals i should say we're making pharmaceuticals so we're starting from scratch okay we're starting from scratch so you're in the lab and there's organic chemistry like how do you make aspirin you can make aspirin in half an hour so that's no problem so how do you make aspirin right so you're making the drug and then you have to test the drug to see the quality and uh, for the first quality and it's quality analysis so we use all these big fancy instruments to say how good is the drug okay so you take uh, we're taking the student through the whole drug development process from just the ingredients right through to the finished product also behind the scenes we're also looking at how do the drugs interact with the body and how the body interacts with the drugs okay and the effect of the drugs in the body and how are drugs classified and so on and so forth so yeah. there's a lot of pharmacology there's organic chemistry there's instrumentation um so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very interesting degree and a lot of yeah. our all, a lot of our graduates now um um randox actually locally randox uh snap them up yeah uh, so and what i think is interesting and what you're saying there and this is a theme and I, I, it's interesting feedback from our open day in november one student said to me um that what he really loved was he actually met one of our lecturers who'd studied somewhere else but it's that lab time that you get at lyt that actually makes us stand out it's Jeez. the fact that you're not just writing about what the the, the practical is you're actually in the lab and as uh, what can you give a sense of how much lab time Time there is well and even in first year i mean you'll spend out of five days you spend two days in the lab 
So yeah. a five day teaching week is two days in a lab. And that's sort of, you know, it's carried through um, right through to year four. Like for a five credit module for every three hours in the class, every two hours in the classroom, three hours in the classroom, you could be two to three hours in the lab. Yeah. Okay. And so it's not just sitting in the classroom, you know, yeah. listening to the lecture, you know, doing all the notes and doing the writing and whatnot. You know, so, you know, from week one, you're in the lab, yeah. you have the lab code on you and the goggles and so on and so forth. And, you know, we uh, we teach you, you know, the basics from week one onwards, um, yeah. right up into fourth year. So in the fourth year in the honours degree programme, uh, for each of these uh, programmes, uh, there's a research project. And that's where you're let loose <laughs> into the lab yourself and you go off and do your own research using your own chemical using the chemicals yourself using the instruments yourselves and so on and so forth so sort of um um sort of teaching the student or training the student up on how to work um yeah. outside of here you know in their future careers yeah. that's fantastic and again i suppose if, if someone is thinking about a science degree and they enjoy practical element then they're going to love lyit science programs because that learning through doing is a big Absolutely. feature of what we do and getting right in there we're going to change gear now and we're going to talk about all things agriculture and and what's interesting about agriculture and lyt likewise similar to the science we have the level seven and we have the level eight option so the level yes. eight being that four-year honors degree and then the level seven for anybody watching being the three-year level seven bachelor degree but again it has that plus one top up so let's yes. talk about the level eight and the level sevens quite similar in terms of their course content but what yes. would someone be expecting to i suppose cover if they were doing either of those degrees in agriculture well an agriculture uh, agriculture um program again there's a, 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 it's not so much in the labs it's, out in the, it's literally in the field and yeah. from um again week one year one you're on a bus to a local farm um, and that's carried that whole thing then is carried uh, throughout the whole four years um, and and first year you know you do learn the animal husbandry you do but you do learn about basic science as well so there's a bit of basic biology but a basic uh, chemistry and uh, maths and then you're just building on that then and um, there's a, a few environmental science modules there's a bit of microbiology in it too because microbiology is coming in quite a bit into the agricultural sector mm -hmm. um, so it's it's, uh, it's but as I said, there's a huge, huge emphasis yeah. on going out onto farms, and so much and so perfect. that in second year, in second year, in second semester, in second year, so our current second years now, they're going out. They won't be in the college at all this semester. Mm -hmm. So they're going out on a twelve-week uh, placement. So they do six weeks in a farm and six weeks in a farm-related industry. Yeah, and that's in second year. But right the way through that, like you're mentioning that about that practical element. Um, if anybody wants to, they can check out the Department of Life and Physical Sciences Facebook page because the video content that comes from the department, the yeah. agriculture <laughs> um, teams, like it's yeah. amazing. And it, they're out there and all different types of farming from dairy to pig, poultry production, right the way across, yes. across all aspects. And again, that yes. work placement element. So for anybody, you know, one thing I know that the team is big on in, in agriculture culture is if you come from a particular background they want you nearly to go away from that and, and try other areas of farming absolutely. And, absolutely and that's a big deal like it's allowing you to expand your own um yeah. interests yeah i think the big thing there if, if anybody's interested in the agriculture program go to the facebook page um because the ag team are um big into their facebook and they take <laughs> a lot of videos and so on but so i couldn't even begin to describe them here now what's involved yeah. in the field trips but if you go yeah. there there's there's loads and loads of videos loads. um loads check and, that out. And, yeah check that out yeah yeah and so in terms of careers again um another interesting fact it has teaching council recognition your agriculture degree as well yeah um so uh no but a lot of our students then go on as well teaching is one aspect of it but also um going to uh government agencies yeah um yeah and a lot of our students actually went on to do research um yeah. and we have a couple of phds now or students that have went on to do phds um and work through chancas as well that's amazing and again multifaceted careers 
loads yeah. of options in terms of it. But Absolutely. again, it goes down to the discipline area. So they can, when they reach then the level eight, go into environmental management with their yeah. agriculture degree or animal and crop science for anybody watching yes. tonight. Now we're going to move into probably what would be classed as one of the most popular programs within the department, veterinary nursing. Um, high demand program. There's only four um, institutes in Ireland that offer vet nursing. You have UCD, Athlone, and Dundalk and ourselves. So it's high demand. Um, for those people who are maybe watching um, tonight that are interested in veterinary nursing, take us a wee bit through, I suppose, what we offer in terms of LYIT. Well, at LYIT, as you say, is, is a huge demand and we get students from the four corners of Ireland coming to do this. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And it has been since day one. Um, it's accredited by VCA and also Acovine. So Acovine um, is the European accreditation body. So you can work throughout Europe with us this um this um uh, program um and the way it's designed is that you're six weeks in six weeks out for three years okay so you get a huge amount of experience on placement so sorry i should have said six weeks in college and then six weeks out placement so you're in and out six weeks at a time um so it's two placements two six weeks placements per year so that's six um placements throughout your three year program and like that you're you go around the different um different veterinary practices as well uh in donegal and outside donegal as well and even up the north as well so you get loads and loads of experience and um they get their pick of jobs coming out of that program they're crying yeah. out for vet nurses yeah crying out for vet nurses at the moment and Again, I suppose going back to facilities, the facilities at LYT are exceptional when it comes to the veterinary mm -hmm. nursing program. And for anybody that's watching tonight that wants to maybe come to the campus, that can happen too. If you just go to the LYT website and click on open days and campus tours, you can actually book your own slot in and we can take you through the campus and let you have a good look around. Let's talk about the pharmacy technician program, uh, Kim. It's a two year yes. house certificate program. Um, yeah. Again, another collaboration actually there um, with uh, Ulster University. So can you talk to people about what the pharmacy technician program is? Okay, so the pharmacy technician is a level six two year program. And again, like that, um, with our other programs, there's a lot of placement embedded in it. So it's not like you're for two years sitting in a classroom. No, absolutely not. You're out in placement um, quite a bit also in that program. And that then leaves you qualified as a pharmacy technician. Now, what a lot of people do now is, um, and this is, it's like a back door into pharmacy. So what we have now, we have a formal agreement in place with UU Korean. Okay. Mm -hmm. So any student um, uh, of ours that does a pharmacy tech course and gets 65% or above in their science related modules can get in to UU Korean. And that's amazing. Farm. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people now are step, coming so. here to do that. You know, yeah. um, you know, they enjoy the pharmacy tech. Yeah. Okay. But they, they're deliberately coming here to do the um do this pathway into pharmacy yeah and again that stepping stone and and it's a great building block as well because you cover so Absolutely. much content in terms of the course dental nursing now um in terms of dental nursing it's a two-year program again qualified dental nurse at the end of the two years um why would someone consider dental nursing what's special about the program at lyit well, again, um, so it's a level six, it's a level six two year program as accredited by the Dental Council of Ireland. And um, you are uh, an A student also is out in placement quite a bit. And again, they're going around the placement, um, around the different dental surgeries. Um, so in year one, you have two six week placements. In year two, you have a 12 week placement in semester one. So you don't even come on campus in semester one of year two. And then um, semester two of year two, you have another six week placement. So again, yeah. it's, it's a bit like the vets, you're on, as much, on, on campus as much as time as you're out in placement. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. that's where you learn the skills and that's where you get to know people and, and so on and so forth and reinforces them what's been taught. And one thing I, th I heard a stat um, during the year about dental nursing, that two thirds of the students that went out in their work placements were actually employed 
by um, the employer who had taken them out. Like yeah. that's amazing. That's yeah, the connection with industry. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. So in terms yeah. of knowing that you want that potential, we're going to talk about just very briefly now about the three health science programs. Um, they were introduced two years ago. Now I know our first cohort just went to Coventry. Um, in the last few months, really, they joined uh, Coventry in September time. Um, but we offer a higher certificate in occupational therapy studies, and we off also offer the physiotherapy studies and then dietetic studies so let's take um occupational therapy studies so what what does that cover well the occupation well uh, i'll talk about the three of them in general it's probably quicker yeah. um uh, to yeah. talk about the three so the three of them um what happens here is you join us for two years Mm -hmm. Okay, and once successfully completed um, uh, all your modules here, you can go on into Coventry. Okay, so places are limited to sixteen because that's uh, sixteen for each of the different uh, each of the three um, programs, and that's because Coventry um, can only take sixteen uh, from us at the minute. Okay, mm -hmm. so I get a lot of uh, emails. You know, um, you know, if my child comes to LIT, will they be guaranteed a place in Coventry? Yes, as long as they pass everything they will go to coventry okay so i just want to make that clear okay yeah. so they come in there's a question in here tonight kim actually really? that question has come in on to facebook yeah. so you just okay. answered it it comes up quite a bit it comes up a bit. <laughs> so 16 places if you if um, a student gets a uh, uh, secures a place and um passes all their modules they're away to coventry if they so wish yeah um and there's a lot of common modules within those three programs so any parent that's out there worried about oh i don't want my child going off to coventry on their, on their own they won't be on their own absolutely not you know their your child is going to be one of 48 because the yeah. modules a lot of the modules are taught in common they all get to know one another okay mm -hmm. and they all have the, the one by whatsapp group and the snapchat group and all the rest of it so by the time they go to coventry they know everybody you know yeah. and so they're not i, I wouldn't want any parents to, to think that their child is going off on their own and they won't know anybody and yeah. so on and so forth so it is reassuring that your child will know other people you know as well and subjects one thing i want to highlight with these courses is there is a subject that leaves there you do need to be studying and there's an entry requirement isn't that right yeah yeah so it's um it's biology you know you keep me right yeah. here now if you want yeah biology. <laughs> you probably know that's better to me but i uh, know no it's definitely the biology now biology. i will warn any parent out there or any potential student out there the points for these programs are particularly yeah. high. yeah for level six students. programs yeah for, uh, they're very uh, yeah. very high yes the physio now i yeah. think the physio the points were the physio um um not to alarm anybody but they were the highest in lit last year yeah okay, so in that space and but what's interesting though about that that's still lower though because you're guaranteed a two plus two with that partnership with coventry so look for anybody that is watching tonight and they're thinking about options that's your level six seven list so occupational yes. therapy physio dietetics it doesn't even that doesn't interfere with your level eight list so parents watching tonight if your young person is thinking about ot physio or dietetics their level eight list can remain as is but this is your level six list so yeah. like, to know that you've got the two plus two that's a big deal so look we give her a, a good roundup there of all things um the department of life and physical sciences um one thing i suppose if we were going to kind of wrap up and ask you kim what makes like the department stand out what is special about the department of life and physical sciences before we move just to kathy uh, and tony well i think one of the big things is that you know we have such an emphasis on the practical element of it you know whether you're in the lab making your drugs or you're you know in the physio room you know with the skeletons and so on and so forth or whether you're out on a farm or whether you're out in a veterinary practice there is such a level of hands-on um yeah. learning you know so you're not always sitting in front you know in a classroom sitting in front of a teacher that's not the case at all you know there's a nice balance between the two the other thing I would say is because, you know, we have, you know, smaller numbers in the big universities, we get to know our students quite well. And, you know, and that offers us a certain amount of additional support that wouldn't be there in the bigger universities. And we get to know yeah. our students and, you know, and, and, and we, you know, we do build relationships with our students and help them through then from year one right through to year four. And if any students struggling, we'll spot that straight away and we'll help put the supports in place to uh, get that student through through to fourth year. 
Yeah, and that sense of community kind of comes through um, and you hear that from graduates and we'll be chatting to Tony now as well. Um, the connection with employment as well and employers, like I always think it's so special in terms of the Department of Life Physical Sciences, the amount of people, industries, employers that come back and just really highly credit um, what has been delivered at LYT from the academic perspective and ready and people for industry. Um, we're now going to spotlight um, a particular program. We're going to be um, featuring the program Food Science and Nutrition and we're going to be chatting with Kathy Hannigan, lecturer in Food Science and Nutrition. So Kathy, this is your first time live and online with us. So and I'm sure it's the first yeah, time. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Kathy, we're going to talk a bit about um, food science and nutrition. Just last night we had open evening and during our open evening session there was a question that came in about well what is food science and nutrition? So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to ask you what is food science and nutrition, the degree program? Well, thanks very much, Fiona. Yeah, food science and nutrition is, well, it's for me, it's when you walk into that supermarket and you see the big wall of all those different products, um, those wonderful food products, you just think that each time you look at those products, there's a food scientist behind one of those, right? So it's very much about um, understanding, getting the knowledge about the production of safe, um, quality and nutritious food stuff, you know? So. In LYIT, what we do is uh, first year, as you mentioned, we do physics, chemistry, biology, maths. And then throughout the years, then we progress to more specialized subjects such as mm -hmm. food microbiology, biochemistry, uh, food production, food nutrition. Um, we go into new product development. Um, so, and on top of that, well, that's just to name a few modules, but on top of that, then we have our core, um, yeah, our nutrition modules such as, yeah, human nutrition, sports nutrition, dietary evaluation. We have um, nutrition, disease and health promotion. And each of those uh, we, we discover and we learn about the nutrients of the foods and what's good for you in your diet, um, what can affect you, how much do you need and what can affect your physical and mental health. Yeah, and what's be, I suppose special about the program is again um, the the fo the number of areas that you can kind of go down in terms of the roots, whether as you mentioned, testing, um, development, product development, food product development, and then also that nutrition side of things as well. So there's multifaceted in terms of it. Um, in terms of your students and graduates, like where would they go with a food science, a food and science degree, a food science and nutrition oh, okay. degree? Yeah, food science, because we have such a wide area, the um, a lot of the students, they actually are sought after job wise because mm -hmm. um, there's quite a, there's a lot happening in the food industry, both locally in the Northwest and all around Ireland. So they're they're attractive to employees because, again, you mentioned there a while ago about lab based. They get very hands on experience in producing foods such as important foods like beer and chocolates. And then they get to test them and they do get to taste them as well. You know, so, yeah, some of our students are in the likes of Revo in Nomadic, uh, further field, maybe in Kerry Foods or in um, in Glambia. But because it's food science and nutrition, they're actually quite transferable across the sciences. So at the minute we have students in Randox, we actually even have students up in the labs in the, in the hospital. So it's because yeah. it's it's wide and it's in the sciences area. Yeah. And who would who would pick this program? Like, would you need a particular flair in sciences to choose this program? Well, I think with working in the food sector and I haven't had the experience of work, working in the food sector, you know, it's somebody that's looking for a bit of excitement because it's yeah. a busy sector it's no two days the same it's constantly evolving you even have to look at you know sustainability climate change people are changing their diets in the minute they're going to more plant-based diets and with that our course will give you the knowledge of understanding what does that mean from the nutrition side of things from the food regulation side of things and also to um understand how to produce that food but now you don't have to be a cook to do this course. I mean, I could hardly boil you an egg, you know, but if you give me a, a several ingredients, I can put them together, you know, produce that food and run it through a production facility. So we have a lot of graduates in like quality management, production management, new product development, uh, we have nutritional advisors. Um, some students are going on to do postgraduates, such as uh, in nutrition, in dietetics, we have ones doing um, food security, which is quite popular as well. So. It's yeah. really a multidisciplinary course. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's attractive from the job point of view, and also it's very exciting. 
Yeah. And what I think what you're doing today is you're actually showing that kind of variety, that sense of variety in terms of careers and showing that it's multifaceted. It's not just, um, I suppose, a pigeonhole, really, where you're going to be in the same role for a long period of time. You probably can move with this degree into a couple of different areas. Oh, absolutely. We get some students at the start, maybe in the lab, you know, testing products and then they discover, well, actually, they really like the production of the product. They get mm -hmm. a really good hands on experience, of the production and then could maybe end up in new product development. So they're actually being very innovative, developing the product and then running it lab based and then going out to the production floor and scaling it up. And there's nothing so successful as walking into that supermarket and seeing that product going, you know what, I developed that product. Yeah, and that um, big satisfaction and being able to say something like that. But uh, is there something mm. coming is, uh, in terms of placements, possibly thinking about introducing a level of a placement in the programme? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we do have the links with industry, you know, so we have had so the opportunity of some students starting into work placement for short periods. But we, what we actually intend to do over the next while, we've looked at our courses and again, with that close contact with industry, we keep our courses up to date and they keep it very relevant. So we're looking about extending our placement and putting in a full semester off placement that again, will uh, it's going to make the student very employable, but um, yeah. the, the job opportunities are there. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, like those placements can have such a benefit for the students when we're talking about dental nursing. Um, speaking now, I suppose, of graduates and graduate prospects, we're now going to jump to Tony Kelly. And Tony would have been um, a graduate from um, Food Science and Nutrition. So, Tony, you're really welcome. Thanks so much for coming online with us this evening. Thanks so much, Fiona. Thanks for coming online because it's not for everybody, but we appreciate you coming on and telling us your story. Not so in terms of thank you. So in terms of like the program, you um, you've just come through it, and what did you enjoy the most about food science and nutrition? Well, a lot about what you have been talking about so far, Kim and Kathy. It's a big thing is the versatility. Uh, the course, it's when you look back at it now. For me, in hindsight, you don't actually realize when you're in it, but when you're out of it, you realize how much you've covered and how much that puts an edge on you and makes you such a unique character when you go for jobs or applying to further on education because if you were to compare this course with other universities just doing nutrition courses it's completely different you would never even touch on some of the techniques and the subjects that you get introduced to so there's things that i was end up learning that i ended up really liking becoming my favorite things to be doing and i would have never even thought about them before I did the course. Yeah, it's funny. We were we once had uh, were in through the, one of the food science and nutrition labs, and they were making beer. And um, you just went in and seeing that kind of practical side of things uh, happening yeah. in the background. It's just again that that level of experimentation and getting in through the labs just stands out and does make us difference. And in terms of yourself, what are you currently doing or planning to do? So whenever I started that course, I really was just looking to cover my chemistry modules. LYT is probably one of the only places that would cover me in order to do a master's in dietetics. So I'm just in the next month or two, I'll be hopefully getting my acceptance to Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh. So that's a two year master's degree in dietetics. And then I will specialize in oncologist. So it's oncology dietetics. So you're working with cancer patients that are either undergoing or recovering from chemotherapy. So that's where I hope to end up. And it's because of the course I've just finished that I'm able to get into that master's. But um, it's get, definitely gave me the tools to do that. But I have to say I could have so many job opportunities now just sitting here without doing anything else. You don't realize yeah. whenever you come out, I'm somebody I wouldn't want to come out of doing a four year degree and have one or two options. There's so many things I like to be flexible. And the thing is, if you're somebody that's looking to apply now or, you know, you really like to travel, young people want to get away and do things, you can take this course with you absolutely anywhere. It'll carry you anywhere. And as Kathy says, they're very in demand. And because of the 50-50 practical and theory, you're going to have so much more accuracy and precision whenever compared to somebody else that's in a class with so many more people. With LYT, it's small numbers. You get that one-on-one -on -one time with your lectures. And, you know, you know your lecture, you really build a relationship with them. All I have to say, I talk to every single one of my lecturers 
Um, I'd like to think I knew them all quite well and they were very supportive the whole way through, whereas you don't get that everywhere. I think I kind of took that for granted, but whenever I talk to other people my own age in universities with bigger numbers, they might not even speak to their lecturers. Yeah. They might not even yeah. you know, get that support. So definitely it's um, helped me get to where I'm going to be going next. Yeah, and that's amazing to hear that. And sometimes when young people are making choices, there's this assumption, I need to be in a classroom with 300 people and um, and that's what I'm looking for. But then when you start to go through a degree program, to be able to have that access to facilities, access to like the practical side of things, and then to be able to have that one-to-one -one relationship with your own lecturers where you can ask those questions, like you're like the poster child for food science and nutrition when your, your passion just comes through and coming from a non science background you can see that like that energy and I've no doubt that you're going to excel now and what you do in terms of your own postgraduate study um if I was to ask you if you had to go back again would you choose this program definitely absolutely I think it was a blessing I only applied to LIT which I think people should know two days before it closed um and it was a blessing because I really for me anyways having those smaller classes and getting to try all these different things. It's what keeps me going because in food science, nutrition, and in dietetics, I will always be learning. Things will consistently, constantly be changing. So to have a course that's trying a bit of this, doing this subject, trying that, getting hands-on, getting the books in, understanding why you're doing what you're doing, but also getting to do it, it sets it apart. It's really, okay. I definitely 100% would we'll do it again. And just, I'm going to drill you a bit, bit further in terms of, I suppose, yourself. Was it that we, coming from leaving cert, making those choices? Or what was the, the reason behind yourself, kind of that little bit later, making decisions? Because we do find a lot of students are leaving it to the very last minute to make their choices. Yeah, well, really, it was because I wasn't aware, you know, whenever you're probably junior cert level, you're expected to know, maybe the age of 15, what subjects you need to do in order to know what you're going to do so it's very young age um but lucky for, i'd say I'm one of the very few people that knew they wanted to do something so i always knew from that age i wanted to do dietetics from doing science at school but i didn't do the chemistry in time so i needed to go somewhere where i could cover all my chemistry modules and do your biochemistry and the advanced food chemistry all that so that's why i ended up going there but it was really hard to find somewhere that would cover me for all that because now when I've applied to universities, they're looking for A, B, C, and D. And I had to do this course in order to be able to get in. So because yeah, I didn't so do chemistry at leaving cert level, I had to go a bit of a longer route. But because of the yeah. longer route, I know far more than somebody else that just doing a yeah. school from leaving cert straight to dietetics. Yeah, and that's one thing to highlight, I suppose, about LYT, a unique feature is, is that mm. you didn't need that um, module and at, at secondary school level uh, to be able to come into the programme Food Science and Nutrition. We have a few questions since we're going to bring everybody back on um, and there are a few questions come back in um, in terms of everybody. So we have Kim, Kathy, and Tony. And Tony, thank you again for sharing your story because, as I said, your passion and energy, I have no doubt, will propel you forward in your own master's and postgraduate study. Um, a question come in here um, in relation to food science and they're asking should I put the level eight in science and then the level seven in food science and nutrition into my CAO option so um, I suppose either Kim or Kathy whichever of you wish to answer this well I'll come in here with that yes absolutely yeah. fill, fill up both sides of that paper you know uh, <laughs> definitely put in too you know um, as I say you know and when you come in and uh, common entry um that will get you then the guarantee you the four years um so just to be safe tick both boxes absolutely yeah another question is um and kathy i want to throw this to you is is it how much yeah. lab time would you have if you were doing the food science and nutrition degree yeah, well, again, it is very lab based as well. So you're looking probably some of the subjects looking at 50 percent lab. Um, mm. And then when it comes to the exam time, you've already 50 percent of your course done. Um, so when the exams are there, it's only 50. It, it's only 50 percent of your market going to the exam, 50 percent into lab work. Um, yeah, so it's 50 50 quite hands on. Yeah, And and attendance is important, doesn't it, Kathy, when it comes to the lab? 
Well, it is, yeah, because, you know, it's very hard to pass a subject if, you have, if you've missed the, yeah. missed the lab modules, you know, but people love the lab modules because the student is there, they, they get to physically hand on uh, experience of doing themselves and, and they do like the practical aspect of it. Yeah. Um, another question that's coming, uh, come and you answered it earlier, was it, but are you guaranteed a place in Coventry at the end of the two years? So just to clarify, if somebody missed it, Kim, mm -hmm. you guaranteed yeah. your place in Coventry? Yeah, as long as, um, as long as you pass all your modules, yes. And we do take the students uh, through the whole process of, you know, filling in the forms and what all do you need and so on and so forth. So, so we, we'll be looking there. starting that now with our second year, our current second years, we're starting into that now as well. So as long as you pass all your modules, you're guaranteed to place in Coventry. That route. And then final question that's coming um, is doing a PLC in vet nursing, like what I'm doing, so they must be asking, I'm doing a PLC in veterinary nursing. Um, what are the chances of getting a place on veterinary nursing? Well, yes, we do have reserved places uh, for um, for uh, the PLCs and the level fives and so on and so forth. But again, it's a lottery. Um, a lot of people do these things thinking that'll guarantee them um, uh, entry, and it doesn't. We have one place, and it, um, it's a lottery at the end of the day. Yeah, and again, I suppose when it comes to the list as well for that viewer, think about your choices so remember have as many options as you can in there in terms of your list if you are thinking about veterinary nursing as a plc student or as a student coming straight from cao right folks that is us um it wasn't as painful as you may have expected but um uh, we have covered a lot of ground um i want to thank kim and kathy and tony for joining us online tonight um you can always watch this back because this will be on our lyit platforms on youtube and facebook next thursday night we're joined by the department of design and creative media who are going to talk to us all about programs available in the department of design and creative media and we're going to be spotlighting one of the programs and also we're going to be speaking with a graduate as well like Tony tonight. Anybody who has any further questions or follow on questions and you didn't get them answered tonight, you can always message us on our Facebook pages or you can email fiona.kelly at lyit.ie or kim.mcfadden at lyit.ie, kathy.hannigan at lyit.ie and we hope you enjoyed this evening. So thank you folks and good night.